that gives me a chance to get into my uh, speaking voice. <clears throat> la, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> so let me say welcome again, everybody. And uh, we're going to kick off the meeting with some project updates and announcements. Neil. Initially. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, this is Neil uh, Kaden, um, Sakai Qu Community Coordinator. Uh, so yeah, I have a list here. So I'll try and go do, through them pretty quickly. Um, probably most of you saw that Sakai 10.6 has been released. So just make sure you, you know, everyone's aware of that. Um, and the announcement also went out to your security folks with updates that are related to that release. Um, we are looking at, at probably doing, bless you, we are looking at probably doing a 10.7, but we're thinking we will make it a very, um, you know, very targeted release because we want to have most of the community's energy focused on Sakai 11. That's where you really want to shift. But there are a few things, you know, there might be a couple security issues. There's a one um, issue that has to do with how emails handle. There's uh, um, so a couple of translations, things like that. Um, so we probably will have a 10.7, but again, it'll probably be a pretty small release, pretty targeted. Um, so the, the community can mostly focus on 11. Um, Sakai 11, we've had uh, uh, code freeze, um, not code freeze, I'm sorry, scope freeze, and we're hoping to do code freeze by Sakai Camp then to January, uh, near the end of January. And uh, so if folks have additional features they want to get in, we do have, you know, what I like to call a change process so that we, you know, so if you have questions about something you want to get in, you're not sure if it's getting in, um, you know, please contact me. Um, <clears throat> um, anything that's already in, nightly master or trunk, it means it's already in there. So there's there's no questions about things that are already uh, merged in. Um, let's see, uh, mentioned the Sakai camp. Uh, that's pretty close. I assume that pretty much everyone uh, who is uh, signed up, uh, has our, who is planning to sign up already has, has signed up. We have a uh, nice, uh, about what we expected, 24 people, nice mix of uh, technical and non-technical, but Final reminder, in case you were thinking about, about it, we still have a few spaces open. That's a Kai camp in Orlando. Um, in case you didn't see it, uh, I sent out yesterday, we have a call, Open Aperio 2016, which is notable for several things. First of all, um, uh, there's something called an Open Summit, uh, and I believe there will be an option to bundle uh, the Open Summit with Open Aperio or do one or the other. And Open Summit is a new thing that's being sponsored by the Open Source Initiative and Red Hat and Aperio. So it's a collaboration outside Aperio, which is pretty cool, I think. And uh, and that's gonna, you know, be like I think it's uh, we're gonna uh, the dates in the, my brain are kind of escaping me, but it's like one day for the Open Summit and then the Open Aperio for a couple days and um, pre-conference workshops or somewhere I think a little before that. Uh, and the big thing is that proposals are due February 8th, so it's going to be here really, really, really fast. Um, so please think about uh, ways that you'd like to share with the community and consider putting in a proposal. We'd really love to hear from you. That's kind of what make the, makes these conferences uh, work well is, you know, participation, people willing to step up and, and share, um, you know, what they have to offer. <clears throat> so, um, and then let's see. Trying to go through these fast. QA meeting tomorrow, uh, I think at 1 p.m., is that right? And uh, you're welcome to attend. I'll send out a reminder. We could really use a lot of help with QA planning and QA participation if we're going to get Sakai 11 out in a timely fashion. Um, that's going to be one of the major factors, not the only factor, but a big one. Um, so be looking for that. And uh, related to that, um, almost, we're almost ready to roll out um, QA testing badges. Uh, which you might have seen that that survey a while ago. Some of you participated in uh, beautiful work by uh, Julia Forsyth from Brock University. Um, so we have little Kiger badges, and um, I could actually use a little bit more feedback, but I was going to do that, uh, you know, kind of off list. But anyone wants to give a little feedback on not the badges, but actually, um, you know, the process a little bit. Uh, just get a final maybe review of that and then I think we can roll that out. So that will be fun and something we'll be able to roll out with Sakai 11 as we're doing QA, people can earn badges by participating. So uh, if you're interested in helping give a little bit of feedback just on the final touches of that process, let me know. Otherwise, I'll reach out to some individuals. And lastly, but not leastly, mm -hmm. uh, is um, Louisa Lee asked if I could please 
um, an, uh, pass on because she can't be here today, announcement for Atlas. Um, and also there may be other announcements, so I hope I'm, you know, I know I'm hogging a lot of airtime here, but and somebody else might have other stuff. Uh, but Atlas is now calling for entries. Um, and so I will paste into the Etherpad the Atlas page on Imperio.org and the um, how you submit an application. Um, it says the web form is not ready yet, but hopefully soon. And Atlas, as you might, uh, for those of you who have been around the community for at least several years, uh, we used to be known as Twizia, Teaching with Sakai Innovation Awards. Let me paste this in somewhere. I guess under updates, yeah. Let me go ahead and paste that in. There we go. Um, so they've expanded it to be more, you know, broader. So it's um, a peri. I think it said, you know, it's like a teaching and learning award, and it doesn't have to be Sakai. It can be, you know, other, uh, you know, perio related uh, learning technologies. So that's my attempt at zipping through the list. Um, and I can take any questions, or if others have announcements, of course, I can uh, just stand aside. Thanks, Neil. Um, <coughs> I have uh, one other announcement. So Dave has just chatted. Um, so Twithia is now Atlas, but bigger. <laughs> that way. Well, that's great. Um, anybody else have any announcements? I just wanted to mention, and we'll take a look at this uh, more closely towards the end of the meeting, that um, I've updated the teaching and learning uh, conference call page that we use for um, accessing Big Blue Button and viewing the meeting schedule and such. And I wanted to, I have a, a special activity that I hope we have time for at the end to um, vote on unscheduled topics and try to get um, as a way that we might um, help us focus on, on what we want to hear, um, prioritize the topics and get them scheduled. So, uh, we'll do that uh, towards the end of the meeting. So uh, we do not have our uh, scheduled presenters on the call as far as I can tell. Let me just check because I know people have joined since. I last looked at the participant list, so I don't see them. So what we're going to do instead um, is take a look, and I'm going to uh, share this document that Adam Marshall forwarded to the Sakai user list yesterday about um, uh, Morpheus document. So let me get that open and then share. Okay. Can folks see the Morpheus document? No. No. You can't see my screen share. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. So it here it comes. And otherwise, you can go to the link that, um, Adam, if you could paste that link again into the chat for anyone who didn't, wasn't on the call yet and might have missed it. Um, you can go there directly. Yeah. I I also pasted it on the Etherpad, by the way. Oh, right. okay. oh, thank you. Under Jira of the Week. Right. I see that. And thank you for taking notes, by the way, while I was talking and chatting away <laughs> Oh, there. you're very welcome. So, um, Adam, do you want to kind of walk us through this document? Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so this, this came around, uh, was circulated a while ago, before Christmas, and I didn't really have time to look at it until just recently. But um, as I understand it, um, this was kind of discussed on the Morpheus calls and uh, agreement was reached on Morpheus calls. And I think that all the work in here has been done. But I, it kind of worried me because um, whereas some of it is really good and, you know, kind of obvious and so on and so forth, um, other things like changing a load of the tool names, I didn't think was very good at all. And I, 
I, I really I didn't know whether people had actually knew that they were proposing to change the name of my workspace and the the home tool and things like that. So so I kind of went through it and made lots of um, notes, which then forwarded the other day. And I thought we could all talk about it here and see see what our opinion is. Um, so I mean, just um, are most people aware of this? Uh, Quite know how you do this, but uh, <laughs> I mean, if we had a show um, of hands, as it were, um, has everyone seen this document, <laughs> and, or is it a bit, a bit, yeah, bit of? Yeah, not until you shared it, I had not yeah. seen it. Because it just seems a bit odd that decisions of such magnitude can be taken uh, and nobody really knows about them. Right. Um, anyway, so we we could go through it. I think my notes that I'm kind of reading from, which is what I sent to the list, um, the Sakai user list earlier on. I think they're in the the correct document of the uh, correct order of the Morpheus document. So I could just kind of go to, through. Do you want me to pull that email up and share that? Um, well, you could, yeah. I don't know, I don't know whether you'd be able okay. to share two we'll things at the same there. time, but yeah. Yeah, it's probably a good idea, actually, yeah. yeah. All right, let me get that. Okay, yeah. Uh, can you guys see this? Okay. Well, I can. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So um, so the first uh, thing on the the um, the Wolfie's document was was about how they're going to do a kind of breadcrumb trail at the top of the screen, and I don't think I had a massive um, amount to say about this personally. Um, so what what the, what's going to happen is um, the so the, the the little picture that you can see on screen. Um, the user is in a site called another site name, um, and he's in a tool called announcements. Um, and so they're putting the site name and then a slash and then the tool name at the top of the screen. Um, so the only question or point I had about this really was that you've above that um, site name, you've got the site name again. Uh, <laughs> so the sort of top black Sakai bar, if you like, has got your favorites in there. And it's, it's a bit unfortunate they chopped stuff so small, but um, I didn't particularly see the point in having the blue button at the top, which has got the site name and a, a drop down list so you can jump to a tool uh, quickly, it, just, you know, millimeters away from the site name, uh, which underneath it has a list of the tools which you can jump to quite quickly. So I, just, I was just questioning why that was there. If you're already in that site, well, why do you just not show it in the face? So, and, so and Adam, let me just interject that yep. the um, the document that um, I think is it a Google or is it in Confluent? It's this Google it is, document. Yep. Yep. Yeah, people can go on there and and add their own comments too. So um, either you know supporting or in mm. you know adding to issues mm. that they might might have. Yeah. Um, but, but I think you've captured a lot of the. Yeah. Um, issues with these the proposed changes. Mm. I mean, I believe that the comments period's over and they've done the work and it's considered oh. as a sort of done deal, uh, which is oh. kind of what worried no. me. But I still think we should comment uh, because, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. you know, I was, I was just I'm a bit sort of a bit unclear as to quite how all this has, has happened. Anyway, well, that, that, that was my uh, thoughts on the breadcrumb. I don't, does anybody have anything to say or should we, should we just move on to the more contentious um, yeah if anybody has any comments they want to make um i cannot see the chat at the moment i'm going to have to yeah. size it so i can yeah actually get the browser behind yeah i can see the chat um nothing much um okay. set, really, i don't think yeah yeah all right um, yeah. so adam oh yes you're you're commenting right now on the duplication of the two uh two ribbons the dark one and the light one yeah yeah i didn't think it was really necessary really i don't think so either but i know how it was derived yes and, I, can, I can see uh, <laughs> right because of the the normal desktop view has mm. uh both horizontal and vertical and the horizontal presentation you're allowed to click on the site name and pull yeah. down the tool and go directly there and so that that yeah. uh, mobile view merely has the vertical come up to to the top, and we can do better than that. Yeah, yeah, I say so. But it, yeah, it wasn't my my main gripe. <clears throat> no, um, I was sort of thinking that uh, 
the screenshot that it's uh, uh, there just uh, just now. Um, Cut, cutting out a bit first. there. Can you hear me? Uh, not really. Oh, that's better now. Louder. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, so I was I was saying that um, if you go to an, a different site that is maybe under uh, the more site view, mm -hmm. um, then you won't have you know this the, the site um, just right. next to the, to the breadcrumbs. Like I see. In, in, that, in that example, it's pretty easy and obvious what you were saying. Like uh, yeah. because it's the same site, but if you go to a different site, then you okay. will have that that example. Yeah. Okay. I I understand perfectly. Yeah. Right. And um, furthermore, you know, the idea with doing these breadcrumbs was to partially sort of clean up the confusion that users have long had with the uh, the reset tool button that shows up in the upper left of tools right now in Sakai. Um, yeah. So, you know, this would make it function similar to a lot of other websites where you have a trail of breadcrumbs <laughs> clicking on uh, announcements in that image would re basically reset the tool because you're taking yourself back up to the top level of that tool. Clicking on the site name to the left of it takes you to the first tool in that site. Um, so, so that that was the, the rationale behind implementing breadcrumbs into it. Okay. Um, sh shall we move on? Uh, is that okay? Yeah, I think in the interest yeah. of time, we probably yeah. should. Because so um, there was a it's a proposal to change the name of my workspace. Um, which I didn't like the idea of at all. So the idea that there's a few kind of things that go together here. So they, what what's I think that, I think there's a yeah they were trying to alleviate confusion here. Um, what I want to do is change the name of my workspace to home, um, and then consequently change the name of the home tool um, on the site to, to dashboard, and change the name of dashboard to activity streams. And I think this is the bit of the document that I had the most trouble with because I just don't think you can change the name of one thing to to a name which is already currently in use as something else because it's just going to be all sorts of confusion. Um, <laughs> so I had a bit of uh, sort of thinking about it. Um, so the sort of general idea is you you know when you um, go to Sakai um, you when you're not logged in you sort of arrive at the welcome page which is sort of the landing page which is the landing page and um, then you go and log in and then you get put into uh, my workspace um, so that sort of replaces the landing page as it were now I, I got to agree that I don't particularly think my workspace is a great name for uh, for your sort of home site at all um, but I, I was a kind of against calling it home um, so I don't know whether anybody else has got any any thoughts about that I personally liked your suggestion to call it something like my Sakai or my whatever the yeah. branding is at the institution that that actually resonated with me and I agree Good. that using uh, terms that other tools have you had you know, and just changing the meanings of things out from under everybody is not a very good idea. But I, yeah. I, it sounds like some people are on the call who were, um, uh, you know, helped to make these decisions. I don't know if any of you guys want to chime in, but I'm, I'm in agreement with you, Adam. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, we're just, uh, talking whilst nobody else is. Um, so, you know, when you go to eBay or Amazon, um, they don't really kind of mention, they don't have a home button or anything, but they do have their logos. And when you click on their logos, you kind of go back to the front page um, of the of the service. Now, it's a bit different in Saka because it's a different front page, depending on whether you're logged in or you're not logged in. But um, given that nearly all institutions can't do anything in, in Saka without logging in, then it's kind of, you know, it sort of is the sort of same page. So that's why I sort of like the idea of, of a bit, you know, if you click on the Sakai logo um, in the top uh, left, um, then you go back to sort of the, the front the landing page, which is the thing called my workspace. Um, so that just seemed to sort of follow what people would be expecting there, really. Um, now, you might notice, I don't know, but the um, there's, there's like a little a house icon in the, the top black bar 
Um, and if you click on that, you go back to my workspace or you know the, the landing page. So I mean, I don't really mind if that's there, um, as well as the yeah, that's it, as well as the Sakai logo. But um, it seemed. Um, uh, you know, slightly unnecessary. So, certainly, if you were going to, if you're going to take somebody back to um, the the sort of landing page, my workspace, when they click on the Sakai logo, then you, you don't really need it. Okay. So, I do see quite a few comments in the chat, and um, yeah, for, if you want, if you want to speak to any of those comments. Um, yeah, well, I say Terry says um, home is already defined of the landing page of a specific site and uh, agrees it would create confusion by changing its meaning, which I wholeheartedly um, agree with. Mm -hmm. um, somebody likes branded my web learn, my Sakura or whatever, and then somebody doesn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> the opinions there. <laughs> And then Dave E uh, says the, there is a difference between clicking the Sakai logo versus clicking the house button. Um, thing is that click, nothing happens when you click the Sakai logo. I, I don't think. Um, um, right. And then Laura says redundant. Adam, it seems redundant. Um, is that the, the home button, is it, or the Sakai logo? I don't really know. Yeah. And I, I just going to add that I think that, um, yeah, I think the idea from the Morpheus team was uh, if we change that to home, the My Workspace at home, then they would change the, the home. That That's where it cascaded into discussions about what it would be at the site level, which might be other yeah. comments about that. So. I can see what, how that would come about, but I personally think you just can't go and, you know, <laughs> change the name of My Workspace to something else, something that already exists. Because, right. you know, you know, people are going to say, oh, you know, when I go to my home, you're going to say, well, are you using Sakai 10 or Sakai 11? And then, you know, uh, and it might turn out that some institutions decide to keep the word home on the, for the first page of a site and other ones decide to change it to my workspace. And what about the users that haven't heard that you've changed home, uh, changed the name of my workspace to home? And it, I just, you know, I just, I feel people would laugh at us if we did that. Um, but anyway. Um, so, so, Adam, this is Laura Geckler from Notre Dame. Can you I, hear me? I can perfectly, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I've been thinking about uh, Sakai 11 and thinking about uh, what what our users are going to think when we move to Sakai 11. Mm. Uh, I think the change from Sakai 10 to 11 is going to be uh, large enough that I've started, even though Notre Dame probably can't implement it until the spring of 2017, the truth be told, and that's terrible for me. I just really want to get it as soon as possible. But if we can't um, have a, a production instance over the summertime, then I, I just can't do it here. I, I can't. I, I need the summer, a lighter semester as a shaking out period. But all yeah. that to say, all that to say, that in terms of Morpheus, in terms of Sakai 11, I've started to have change management talks here already because I think for our users, it's going to look and feel differently enough that if we don't pay attention to how to, to uh, help our users with it, I, I, I hope it looks and feels differently enough that it's a brand new world, that it's a, it's a brighter, cheerier world. And now would be the perfect time to introduce any kinds of names of uh, changes in naming conventions um, in symbolic conventions, like what does home mean and whether or not you can click on the Sakai uh, logo. So um, part of your argument, I really disagree with that uh, that users are going to kill us or anything. We we simply have to plan that it's going to be totally different by uh, by way of supporting that. Uh, recently at Notre Dame, we had to change the name of our gradebook. We had been using gradebook two, but we named it gradebook. And then in order to use the uh, screen steps live documentation where it would be confusing because our users were customarily referring to gradebook two as gradebook, we changed the name of our gradebook to gradebook two. And guess what? I had people stopping me saying, I love the new gradebook. <laughs> I did not have the heart to tell them it was the same old, same old. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I, I do I agree with you there, Laura, that uh, it, it is a good time to change um, things. And I don't, I don't really have a problem with changing the names. I do have a problem mm. with changing the name to something that means currently means something else. Mm. So I see, yes, I see that's Dave, always hard. Yeah. Always hard. Yeah. So I see Dave E suggested, um, what about changing it to my home, which I don't, yeah, I don't mind that too much because it does sort of differentiate between you know, the course home, as it were, and yeah. your home. Another idea is to make mm. it a property and let each institution name it whatever they want. <laughs> well, well, yeah, it effectively is, but then it's documentation, you see. You've got to, you've got to go through and you've got to yeah, change every right. single instance yeah. of, you know, yeah. the name it was to that your is. name. So, yeah, I, I agree. Um, yeah. e, anyway, uh, shall, we, shall we move on? Um, we've got... Uh, yeah few things recorded i've made yeah. some notes here um just um yeah 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 um yeah i mean dave again davey saying oh, my workspace is odd and i agree it's not a good name my workspace i mean you don't yeah we don't, yeah so i'm happy agree. to change it yeah. but just to, just not to home <laughs> yeah yeah anyway uh, right so um yeah so now the next one which was uh, i thought he, he well, not yeah, I didn't like this one either. It was changing the home page of a site. So that's the sort of home tool plus synoptic tools. Um, the thing that's, you know, by default at the top of the list of pages on the left. Um, changing that name of that to dashboard. Um, now, I wasn't really entirely sure whether the proposal was what what the proposal was here. Um, I mean, is the because you know there's the new dashboard tool. Um, was the intention to have that as part of like the the new home page of the site? Um, and if it was, was it was it was the intention to have it there instead of the site information display, or as well as? And if it was as well as, then how is it all going to be laid out? And it, it didn't really say in the, the Morpheus document. It just says change the name of the the, the home. Um, page in a site to dashboard um, and it struck me that it, yeah, it's actually not a dashboard um, you know your your my workspace is far more of a dashboard um, it, it might be a dashboard for a, an individual site um, but if you are going to have the thing we call the normal dashboard tool in my workspace and you've got the synoptic tools as well then that really does present a view into all the sites you're a member of in the whole of Sakai so that sounded more like a dashboard than Having done the, the sort of the first page of a site, so I don't know anyone who was, if anyone was on the Morpheus um, decision-making team, you know, is the intention to have the new dashboard tool in every single site, or is that just going to be in my workspace? Or um, does anybody know? I believe. Well, Neil, Kyle, are you on the are you on the call? Uh, yes, I am. So, so can, yeah, go ahead. Sure, absolutely. So the idea here, um, you know, the, the the actual dashboard tool, I think, is still in progress. And that's yeah. not something that I think we're ready to roll out for 11. Um, but the idea here was that, you know, based off of, you know, user surveys and data that, that we've been using here at NYU, uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, I think the home tool insights is a dashboard for people. They, they use it as a dashboard to be able to see quick activity about their site. Um, so the idea here was to change that tool's name to dashboard for the time being. And the dashboard tool, uh, we were considering renaming to something else, maybe activity streams or something like that. And in the future, uh, perhaps those two tools could uh, merge and become a single tool that is a true dashboard for users. I see. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I didn't realize that dashboard wasn't wasn't definitely in uh, Sakai 11. Um, it is in Sakai 11. So mm -hmm. I think oh, it is. Oh, okay. But, uh, it does not include uh, notifications from uh, a lot of tools. No, it doesn't. No. But it, but if you put the, like the dashboard tool and the synoptic tools together, they just about cover everything, don't they? But if you just have one of them, uh, like if you just have the synoptic tools or you just have the dashboard, then it there's definitely bits missing from either, isn't there? So, so I can see that, that you know ultimately the plan might be to to do away with the synoptic tools and have everything in the dashboard. I, I can see that. Yeah. I mean, I just again, I just think that people have been calling you know the 
the home page of a site they've been calling it home for ugh, you know how, how 10 odd years and you know yeah. i just don't think you can suddenly change it really um, i mean if it was a brand new tool and you were getting rid of the home tool and putting something else there then and, yeah fair enough and not only that i'm not sure that that there's any confusion for people about what it's currently called and and you know that that renaming it is serves any you know purpose other than I'm not sure maybe just satisfying um, some notion about what things should be called but um, I'm not sure we should change it given that everybody's used to the home page especially in the context of wanting to change my workspace to home and it, it does sort of muddy the waters I think for users and um, uh, I would agree. I don't think we, I, yeah, again, my opinion, and, but I think it's good to have these conversations, and there's some other comments going on in the chat. Um, here we go, Lightly is wondering um, kind of what, what is the dashboard? What, get to your question, Terry, does a dashboard become more graphics driven? Uh, if you want students to have a landing page, how does the dashboard work to do that? Kind of, you know, and and then, of course, we have the confusion with the dashboard tool and what the intention is for the home page. If, does that, does the home page functionality change with the name change? Doesn't sound like it does. Yeah, I, so, hey, hey, it's Bobby here. I try to, Make some point in the, in the chat room. Um, I think, especially for this home to home change to dashboard, I I'm I think it's very confusing because uh, it's a good time to change things. Uh, mode Saka eleven, but uh, um, every site you think about our users, uh, the websites they visit, they have a home. I mean, we change home to dashboard. A dashboard doesn't make much sense to the students. Uh, in, in my view, and I think they will cause uh, more confusion. Thanks. Yeah. But, um... Can I, I think the, also, sorry to, uh, this is Trisha again. I think the dashboard tool that um, will be presented on Workspace, for lack of another name right now, um, <laughs> is uh, makes sense in terms of, you know, it kind of, um, encapsulate activities and information across all of your sites instead of a single site. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I kind of think you have in something, you have a dashboard. Um, you know, in the plane, you have a dashboard, which has got everything on it, uh, all about all the plane. So you don't really want, you know, several dashboards, one per course. Mm -hmm. It's sort of right. it's sort of the course home, really, the, the front page tells you about that course. Um, I mean, possibly course dashboard, but yeah. Anyway, so I think that the way it is right now, like on the on the trunk server that I pasted before, I think dashboard was on, has only been added to my workspace. Um, they left also the um, the home page, which includes all the synoptic tools. And, yeah. uh, and one thing that um, that uh, that I think that the Morpheus team had in mind when 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 working on all these decisions, um, which I, I'm happy to see that there are a lot of opinions here, uh, by the way, um, because there were a lot of opinions also on those calls. Um, I think one thing that was in mind of, of everyone over there was that we were working on trying to, to do um, like a work for, for the default Sakai, but uh, anyone can continue having their own, like uh, on your, on your, for, for example, if you have your sites with uh, with the templates and you have, you know, you have your home tool and everything, that's where one take over the home tool that you have. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's just the the fact that the help information will be, I guess, based on what what's the default Sakai eleven, which means yeah. that we would have to change the help, um, which we could do. Yeah, I agree, we could do that, but it would be good not to, and especially if. 
if everybody else was, <laughs> was going to have to change it as well, it, it, it sounds like it's the wrong thing to do. But. Okay, so um, it looks like there are um, there's some energy here around keeping the tool inside of a site named home and conceptually understanding a dashboard as being a roll-up of many sites information for presentation uh, in the aggregate. Is that what I'm hearing? That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, if anybody uh, on the call is has not heard that or doesn't agree with that, you can um, weigh in on the chat or come on the mic. It would be really good if someone would take a poll so we could yes, get a count. Would. It really would. It would. It would. <laughs> um, shall we do that? Uh, should we do that after the meeting? Put a little questionnaire yeah. thing together. Definitely. I, I yeah. Okay. Well, I was thinking of the poll tool here in the oh, call. The... Oh, okay. New one on me. Um, I'd, I'd like to chime in. This is Terry Gorelightly. Um, on the home button in the course site, I've found that it's more in the way than anything else. And I've um, gone to making a landing page on a lessons page for the course for the students to interact with and I've hidden the home site more times than not because the information the synoptic information appears on the on the individuals my workspace whatever that's called going forward and the um, intrusion of the format of the home page and how it constrains the design of the course landing page, to me, that's a negative. And so um, the only problem is that when you've got an individual teacher that's doing all of their own designing, they need to have a place to go. But I'm not really sure that the home page on the site is the best place to go. All that synoptic information is already there in the aggregate site, and the rest of it is just in the way. Terry, we have that uh, use case here at the University of Notre Dame as well. We have sort of um, a recommendation I have for instructors who are doing their own course design is to use the home page and just use it to put office hours or um, a, a picture that gives the general idea of what the course is about. So they it's sort of a, um, sometimes it's a lesson light, sometimes their syllabus is in a PDF and they post that on the home page. It's sort of a, a, uh, a light kind of thing. And when they get more sophisticated, they uh, get rid of the home page and use a lessons tool instead. Yeah, and well, one thing that's always annoyed me is that I can't get so many of my professors to get away from leaving the the default words site information display. <laughs> oh, I, I hear ya. I hear I ya. Hate that. I just, peeve. Oh. You can't put the course title in there. You know, what's what is this? So <laughs> it's just very annoying. I and think I, that has to do with the little tiny paper icon with a pen on it that they can't figure out how to use. Yeah. <laughs> but it's an abiding annoyance. Here, here. <laughs> we, we are talking about two different things here. The one we're talking about the default page, which two should be used. Second point we are talking about um, whether home to is good. I mean, I totally agree. I hate home to. It's like, uh, it's not good enough. Um, but I think we were talking about the, once you use the login, the default page, our thinking should call home because this is how millions, millions of websites our user use on a daily basis say home, home page for any website. Um, I completely agree. Home to is, is, is not good enough. And I don't mind. I mean, in Oxford, um, we, some of our sites uh, are using the lessons two as uh, the default page and we call it home 
So you're saying the home tool stays and it stays named home? Well, yeah, we sometimes get rid of it. Um, yeah, what I'm saying is like, like the default page, once the user log in to a site, um, we should have a home to home page or home, something like that. Doesn't matter if it's home to or the lessons. Um, yeah, that's, that's my view. Shall we? So, um, I, it, you know, there are a lot of good discussions around this, but I wonder if we want to move on and talk yes. about, we, we don't have a lot of time, maybe no. um, five, maybe 10 more minutes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dave, and um, so, because we do have other things on the agenda as well. So, um, Maybe we should move on and talk about avatar. Yep. Okay. Um, so the the next thing was um, the avatar. So I think the proposal is to put the person's profile picture um, top right, which is great. Look really good. And then there's a sort of drop down list um, behind that, if you like, which actually is quite similar to the current um, list you get. Um, and I was just questioning some some things about that. I, I kind of like to move on to the next. Um, okay. The, the favourites, if, if at all possible, because I, I quite like my I like the idea. So, um, so anyway, it was in the email, and um, yeah. So anyway, so uh, um, we we had a bit of a talk at Oxford about how many sites a user has. Now, quite a lot of our users have lots and lots of sites. And it might not be the case elsewhere, um, but there was a, there was a note in the Morpheus document saying that um, sites should be listed alphabetically vertically because that's a lot easier to scan than listing them alphabetically horizontally and i got i mean i agree it does but not if you've got like lots and lots and lots of sites and it goes to the go off the bottom of the page so i will was suggesting that perhaps there was a like a system-wide configuration option as to whether your sites draw listed things um horizontally um alphabetically like it currently does or uh, vertically alphabetically um as the proposal is with morpheus so that was just a, i mean personal preference really and you sort of choose whichever it is depending on what you think would work best at your institution um but another thing we've done at oxford is we've got um uh, we've added to the default portal we've added this quick links drop down menu which basically has links to other student systems outside of sakai and i thought that was quite neat um and you know, so quite a lot of websites have it, not not all of them. Um, so I was I was I was proposing that maybe that might be a decent feature um, to have at some point in um, the Morpheus portal. Um, in the uh, Morpheus document, um, it was saying that uh, the New York University are doing some um, work on the site draw, allowing you to um, put a star next to your favourite sites. So you have the site draw, and you can sort of click on the star, and if you click on it, it gets um, starred, and then that site will appear as a favourite in the top kind of menu bar thing. Um, but I was wondering, I mean, this sort of relates back to how many sites people have. I mean, at, at Oxford, you might make, I don't know, you might have 30, 40 sites, and you might make 10 of them favourites. Now, there's not space to display 10 in the top um, bar. Um, so you'd have five or six, and then you'd have like um, some sort of drop down with more sites. So I was wondering, wouldn't it be a better idea to have um, two buttons, one of which is the site draw, which lists all your sites in alphabetical order in some way, um, and that's where you can select your favorites, and then have another drop down, which is your favorites. So, um, and it's, it's not the sort of drop down you have to click on, you just put your mouse over the the, the button and the, the list appears and you can click on it so there's no more clicks and then you can basically have as many favorites as you like and um, uh, you know you don't get into this problem of setting 10 favorites but only the first four or five of them actually appear on the top bar and when you go into the mobile view actually uh, there's no favorites at all because you don't get those displayed in the top bar um, so you set all these favorites up and you go into the mobile view when you really need favorites and there are you know there's no way of getting to them so I thought well why not have like a drop down which appears in both the mobile view and the, the regular web view which just you know opens up your favorites in the middle of the page um adam i have a question so um with with the favorites 
Is the intention, and I'm sorry, I am not that familiar with the changes in Morpheus, so I don't know. Does, would the favorite be a replacement for preferences? Um, I don't think so. I think you can uh, do it in two places now. Set, set the same favorites in two places. So you can set it in preferences yeah. and you can yeah. set it in the site yeah. drawer. I think that's what it was. I don't think that's right. I think oh, okay. Okay. Preferences okay. Yeah, that they are, um, the, the favorites are, uh, um, you know, replacing the preferences. So that's essentially okay. the same preferences. You just click on a star and I believe that. Make pretty confident that there's a mobile sense. view and a desktop view to see your favorites on that. Mm -hmm. But Kyle or someone else could, could jump in and confirm, but I'm pretty sure that's in the notes here somewhere. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely right. So the idea sorry. being that um, it'll be much easier to favorite sites now because in the more sites or all sites drop down or you know modal window, you'll be able to uh, star a site to favorite it. And you can favorite as many sites as you want. Within that, that window, there's going to be a separate tab for um, quote unquote like organizing favorites. And from there, you can you know, very quickly see all of your favorites, access favorites from there as well, even though they'll be in the top bar or, and drag and drop sites in the order you want them to appear. And then that'll get reflected in the top bar as well. Um, so that should be able to replace most of the actions that would take place in my preferences uh, with exception to hiding sites. And so um, is there, uh, how, how would hiding sites work or is that not even being um, included? So hiding sites, yeah, hiding sites should work the same as it has in the past. Um, going into my preferences and hiding sites uh, okay. is going to basically hide them from that more sites window, uh, you know, still making them accessible from uh, was it my workspace? Mm -hmm. Maybe we could put the Morpheus document with its screenshots in the, um, the, the share it. So people, people can see what we're talking about because oh, <laughs> there is some nice little pictures of the uh, favorites. Yeah. Let me let me scroll down here. I uh, yeah. yeah I mean I th I, I think my, my proposal really was that uh, rather than having two tabs within the sites drawer for kind of all your sites and your favorites. Why not, instead of, why not have two buttons in the top bar, one which is your favorites and one which is your sites. So you don't have to, to get to your favorites, you don't have to click on your sites and then click on your favorites. Sure, you just although, on, although favorites will display in that top bar regardless. Uh, you know, your favorite sites are gonna be listed in that top bar. Yeah, but, but um, not on the mobile though. Not on the mobile, that's correct. But um, the, the drop down with the tabs, should you know that should play into the mobile view as well being able to access that and click on a tab to be able to access your favorites yeah yeah i mean i think the, the whole favorites thing is, is fantastic uh, i just yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and there's a screenshot i don't know if that helps um people think about this conversation but it yeah. it is helpful to see that so it looks like to answer laura's earlier question in the chat that um, sites are still organized by term, et cetera, and that's good and makes sense. Mm, yeah. yeah. And then my site has most recent A to Z and favorites. That's nice. And then here's the screenshot for, for uh, organizing the favorites mm. yeah. with drag and drop. Well, I didn't have anything else to say, actually. Um, okay. And do you, do you want to say anything else about tutorial or? or... Well, uh, not really. No, no, I was just, somebody was saying the tutorial looks a bit messy, but um, which it does at the moment. Uh, but yeah. we have done some work for Sakai 10 and we made it look quite neat. And I think it should be applicable. So we were going to contribute that back if people wanted us to, uh, which I'm sure they do. Okay. <laughs> that was so um, maybe, Adam, I'd be happy to help put together a poll on some of these questions. Um, okay, yep, that'd be fab. So, yeah. so that we can um, capture some feedback from everybody that is easy to follow and, and really paints a clear picture of where people stand. Yeah. Um, so we can do that after the call. A couple yeah. of things I wanted to touch on before we adjourn, we have just a few minutes left. Um, we have, adopted a new schedule for um, our meetings, the teaching and learning calls to 
um, host them every other week, um, starting really in February, because um, <clears throat> next week we don't have a topic, and the week after that, we'll, some of, many of us will be at Sakai Camp, so we've decided to cancel that meeting. So the next meeting, and starting in February, we'll, we'll have a solid every other week um, schedule. Um, on February 3rd, we're going to come back from Sakai Camp and share some of the highlights, and so everybody who attended, I hope, will join the call and share um, the, you know, highlights and updates from, from the camp. And later in February 17th, um, Leela Marshall at the University of Virginia is going to share uh, a demo about um, Panopto lecture capture that we have integrated into Sakai. Um, but, so, we do still need to schedule um, sessions in March, and one of the things that I did, um, if you look at Etherpad, and let me also paste this into the chat, <clears throat> let's go over to the um, Teaching and Learning Call Confluence page, because um, near, well, down a bit, um, I've added, I have the, the list of unscheduled topics on the right, but on the left, I've added a poll. Uh, and so this might be something we, similar to what we might want to do for um, these questions around Morpheus. Um, but I'm hoping that you all will take a moment now to um, vote on the two to three top topics of interest to you. and. Um, See if we can use this as a vehicle for identifying the topics that uh, most people are interested in so we can try to get those scheduled sooner than later. Um, and then in our next meeting on February 3rd, we'll take a look at this and um, try to get some of our March openings scheduled based on this feedback. Does that sound like a worthwhile thing for us to do? Hello? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> okay. The link is, I'll paste it in the. Uh, it's in the chat. The chat. It's also on the etherpad. <laughs> so it's, you navigate to, it looks like. Uh, Down to yeah. the vote for unscheduled topics. Oh boy. Well, I'm on the page, but I don't see where to click to be able to vote. You have to log in. Oh. You have to log in. <laughs> oh, that. that. Sorry, I forgot to say that. And right now, when I refresh, it looks like uh, the top two topics are um, an update on the Texas State Marketing Project for Sakai and um, migrating from 10 to 11. Of course, we, we would all love to hear that, but I don't think anybody's um, done that yet. So, um, but, but I think this is helpful. I, I hope you do too, but at least for us facilitators to try to um, focus on the topics of most interest to, to everyone, mm. this will be a huge help. And feel free to pass this along to others who, you know, you know who may not be on the call who might want to weigh in. All right, so right now we have the Texas State Marketing Project for Sakai, 
mm-hmm. followed by the migration from 10 to 11, and then um, an update on the phase two of the lessons enhancements project. This is really helpful to me anyway, um, so we can work on um, getting those topics scheduled. So I didn't see the thing where you had to vote for two or three. I voted for loads. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. Okay. You can, you can, and the nice thing is when you log in, you can change your vote later on if you know if your interests change or obviously as we as we schedule these topics and they've already been presented, we'll change the list. So um, thank you. And this might be a really good way for us to poll the community about these topics on um, the Morpheus changes as well. It's pretty, uh, you know, it's a really nice visual way to see where people are, the majority of people are. Yeah. Okay, well, we are uh, just about at the top of the hour. Um, does anybody have anything else they want to uh, bring up before we adjourn? Um, there was a question here about the Wake Forest folks and if we could get them rescheduled. Absolutely, we will, we will work on that, Adam. Yep. This is actually Adam Hauerwatz. I hope oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. We have two Adams on the call. Uh, so, yeah, we'll work on that as well. And um, Neil is reminding us that our next meeting is on February 3rd. So, we have a little bit of a break for, you know, getting our spring semesters rolled out um, at our individual institutions. And I wish everybody good luck with that. I'd like to ask a clarification on that. Is it going to be every other week or is it going to be twice monthly? It's going to be every other week. Does okay. that, is that work for most people, I hope? And we can always revisit if, if there's... Um... Tricia, there was some thought that, uh, that uh, twice monthly for example, the second week and the fourth week would be easier for uh, someone who only drops into the call occasionally to remember, oh, this is the second week. I bet there's a call rather than every other week. Yeah, sounds well, good. I am completely open to whatever everybody wants. So if, if that's the consensus, then we can totally do it that way. But since we have February 3rd, which is the first Wednesday, maybe we could do the first and the third <laughs> week of every month. Here, here, first and third. Is that, is that work for folks? Well, if anybody has any strong objections, you can, okay. It looks like most people are in favor of that. So that's what we'll do. Thank you. And, uh, I'm, you know, we're at the end of our, time so I'm going to um, wish everybody a successful launch of your spring semester and I hope to see many of you um, on the 27th at Sakai camp thanks thanks I noticed and thanks that Adam Marshall for walking us through the Morpheus document that was really really helpful yeah thank uh, you Adam. my pleasure yeah anytime okay um, yeah. talk to everybody soon okay and there will be a one more Morpheus meeting on Tuesday, next Tuesday, before the Sakai camp. Just oh, okay. So that if yeah, people Thanks. who feel strongly might want to be there. <laughs> okay. Thanks, everybody.